So before we take a look at this paper, a brand new scientific paper by Sonny White just came out. Came out two days ago. And the scientific paper pretty much confirms everything that we've been talking about. In a way where it's actually starting to get a little odd and suspicious, where I was like checking the dates on the paper to be like, oh, when did this actually, like, was this something he was working on for several years and now he's just all of a sudden coming out with it? Sonny White was on with Joe Rogan uh, earlier this year, right, guys? Earlier this year. So let's review. We're going to review the scientific paper. I'm going to go through it with you guys. Uh, before I do that, I want to take a show this uh, Sonny White clip so you guys know who we're it's talking cool about. It's cool to think that, you know, may maybe we could come up with a technology that, you know, provides useful power today for things like this. Um, maybe, you know, as we if we if we put it in aggregate, if we put a lot of them together, right, we could get to a point where... What is that chip? The, so th there? this is th so this is just a 3D print of having a bunch of of those little chips that are one, five millimeters by five millimeters, uh, one and a half volts, 25 microamps. If we add a bunch of those together at a very large extreme, you know that particular board might generate 3.4 watts. And so, so he's basically saying here, this is a free energy microchip. This is Sunny White so right there. That board could recharge your phone in three hours and so imagine a that scenario right where you had a had a phone that's pretty resilient that for the most parts you'd never have to plug it in that might be pretty useful okay so that's that's sunny white sunny white is also famous in engineering circles because he was the guy while working for nasa who tested the impossible drive the em drive his scientific paper is still out there, and it says they found anomalous thrust in the EM drive. So Sonny White was working at NASA. He was at the Eagle Works working on warp drives, warp bubbles. Um, and now he works on a free energy microchip, and he's writing more scientific papers about warp drives, warp bubbles, the configuration of them. And today we got a brand new one that just came out. Sonny White is the lead author. These are probably some people that helped him work on it and wrote the and were like co-authors. But generally, you put like the most famous person first, right? You want to get some attention. <clears throat> it says, we present a new class of warp bubble geometries that are both interior flat and segmented into Gaussian cylinders. Interchangeably called nacelles throughout the paper providing an alternative to the continuous toroidal energy distribution of the Alcubierre model. Using the ADM 3 plus 1 formalization, I have to Google that. Okay. Using the 3 plus 1 formalization, we derive the extrinsic curvature, York time, momentum densities, and energy density for both the Alcubierre baseline and the Gaussian cylinder generalizations with N equals two, three, or four cylinders equally spaced as mutually around the warp bubble. What he's saying right there is that instead of making a ring, instead of a solid ring as our warp drive, like we expected with the Alcubierre drive, we're going to literally make warp nacelles, just like in Star Trek. The warp nacelles in Star Trek are the little things that stick out the back of their little starship space uh, spaceships. So he's saying, we're not going to have a ring around our craft. Actually, it's just going to be some dots. N equals X. One, two, three. It, one doesn't work, but... N equals two, three, or four. Right away, you're starting to see some similarities here. When we're looking at MH370, we're looking at N equals three. There aren't two warp drives, like or two warp nacelles, like in the Star Trek Enterprise. There's three. And they're azimuthally spaced around the plane. My props, right? Azimuthally spaced around the plane. Um, what does it say here? Unlike the diffuse azimuthal ring of negative energy in the Alcubierre solution, our construction localizes exotic stress energy into discrete cylindrical channels aligned with the bubble wall. 
energy density maps, boost magnitude contours, and three-dimensional ISO surfaces demonstrate how these segmented Gaussian cylinders maintain a synchronized interior while tuning curvature effects to end caps. The results suggest that warp bubbles can be engineered with structurally discrete geometries resembling science fiction starship, starship architectures where exotic matter localization, end cap shaping, and interior flatness are tunable engineering parameters consistent with general relativity. Again, there's general relativity. General relativity always gets mentioned because Einstein was right. We can bend space-time. And if we can bend space-time, then we can make a warp drive or a wormhole. A warp drive and a wormhole are the same exact physics. And so is the EM drive. That's why Sonny White was looking at warp drives. That's why Sonny White was the one testing the EM drive. That's why Sonny White's doing free energy microchips based on the Casimir effect. Because it's just a matter of scaling up turning up the dial of your effective of your effect small effect you could say is like the casimir effect turn it up now you have propulsion now you have an em drive turn it up even more now you're literally riding the wake of your of space time turn it up even more and boom now you've created a singularity okay it's not really that i didn't think it was that complicated but there you go i just had to recap it for y'all so if you're brand new to this topic now you know something important EM drive, warp drive, and wormholes are all the exact same physics. Manipulating space-time so we can get negative energy, which allows asymmetric thrust. Okay, simple. That's it. That's it. That's all there is to it. <clears throat> okay, so what were the main takeaways from this paper? I'll be honest, I don't think I read every word, but I skimmed through it a little bit on it. Now, the first thing it does, like a lot of these papers do, and I've read so many scientific papers now, I'm starting to get used to this, is they start off with giving you the background. Like Miguel Ocubieri solved Einstein's equations in 1994 and blah, 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 right? They do all that. We don't really need to go through all that again, because if you want to know the history of when the warp drive, you know, science came into play, you can check it out yourself anytime you want. Uh, then they usually go through the math, which usually goes above my head. Um, but I think the ADM, a lot of, are they talking about, yeah, ADM is how they're just formulating Einstein's equations. And I think that has to do with space time plus one extra dimension of time dimension. Usually I was trying to figure out if the ADM three plus one includes the ether. Sometimes what you're trying to figure out here is, are they including an extra dimension when they're doing their math? Because as we've kind of concluded, there must be an extra dimension. If an object blips out of space-time, then they went to another dimension or it's using a pass-through, which could be perceived as an extra dimension. Um, let's just go to the stuff that actually uh, makes a little more sense. One of the things I was trying to figure out here that I haven't been able to check yet is if there's a relationship between the nacelles collapsing on the craft in this warp drive paper. So if anybody has read the paper or interpreted it and seen any part of it where they talk about the warp nacelles collapsing to cause the effect to happen, let me know. I looked through it, skimmed through it. There's a couple parts where they talk about the radius um, of the nacelles. So maybe it's somewhere in there in the math here that I didn't find it. This is the part I want to show you, the graphics. What do these warped nacelles actually look like? So if you actually look at the graphics, which I have on the screen right now, if you're listening on audio, the first graphic is just a ring. The first one is a ring, which is Miguel Alcubierre's solution for his warped bubble, which is basically to put a ring of negative energy around your craft to cause your craft to float. And what Sonny White's saying here is that instead of a pure ring, we can have little dots. Now. What are these little dots? I'm going to go ahead and say probably plasma, like literally the thing, literally the thing that we've been talking about. <laughs> so essentially what he's saying is we don't need a perfect ring around our craft. We can use these nodes and these nodes, as long as they're in this case, you can see it's quite literally an equilateral triangle. 
<laughs> n equals three is literally the equilateral triangle. N equals two is just a straight line. And then N equals four becomes a square. So now you can see we're using these geometric shapes to produce our warp bubble. And you may say, okay, well, but how does that actually produce the bubble? Well, here you go. Take a look at these other uh, graphics. On the next page, it actually shows you and I think he explains, and I'll read this part to you guys. He explains how this works. I think it's right up here. I think this one here. Okay. Uh, yeah. So these are the energy density. So the energy density um, at X equals zero for the Alcubierre equation and the cell-based equations. For the Alcubierre bubble, negative energy density organizes into a continuous ring as expected from the spherical symmetry of the shaping. By contrast, in the interior flat nacelle designs, the same negative energy is no longer distributed uniformly, but instead breaks into discrete cylindrical lobes, each aligned with a nacelle position on the ring. This difference is central. The Alcubierre construction requires exotic stress across the entire azimuth, across the entire ring, whereas the nacelle version localizes it to a finite number of channels, leaving the interior flat and shear free. Therefore, you're not going to have any stresses. The N equals 2 case forms a dipolar pair. N equals three creates a triangular arrangement and N equals four approaches a rectangular prism. These prismatic symmetries emphasize that energy support structure of the bubble can be disc discretized while still preserving the essential interior flat property. Okay. So you guys may be wondering, Ashton, what the hell does that mean? Good news. That's why I got my new looking shirts here so I can look real formal and official for you guys. What this essentially means is that if the interior is staying flat, the people inside the bubble are going to just appear like they're walking through a doorway. The interior of the bubble is not going to rip them to shreds. It's not going to compactify them. The interior of the bubble stays just like space time on the outside of the bubble. So what he's saying here is that this new configuration actually shapes the negative energy in a better way, in a more logical way for your wormhole to be produced. So to me, this is the biggest takeaway of this paper. And this is why I want to talk to Sonny White before you ask. I've already emailed him. I already emailed him. I don't expect any responses because this is like this is so far over the target that I've now my first question to Sonny White has to be like, dude, what are you what's going on? What are you what are you involved in, bro? Sonny White, what the what the hell are you actually involved in, brother? There's no way this is random. Like you're either watching my videos, watching the MH370 videos, and coming up with theories, which is cool, or you already know how they're doing it and you're writing the scientific papers after the fact. Cause because look, look at look at this, this image here in the bottom left. That's what the that's what the orbs are doing. This is all about shaping your plasma to produce the warp bubble that you want. That's what this paper is all about. And you're looking at the image of it right there on your screen right now. So they're saying that if we use these nacelles to focus the energy, we can create a flat space time. So we can create normal space time in the interior of this bubble so that anybody that's going through this wormhole, no problem. No issues, not going to get ripped to shreds. So he's advancing the idea of how a humanly traversable wormhole is going to work. But there's more. If you're already really excited going, this is weird, man. Like this is, you're looking at the orbs in the MH370 video here. He's just not explicitly saying it. 